Welcome to the putback presented by 888 Sport. Bet $20 on either the Knicks or the Nets and get 88 bucks in free bets by using the promo code SNY88. I'm Ian Begley here with Chris Williamson. Chris, what do we have for the baseline this week? Well, Ian, during the Knicks' improbable season, a lot of attention has been placed on Julius Randle and some of the younger Knicks stars, but we should give the veterans some shine, playing important roles and occasionally stepping up for incredible performances. So what guys have really stood out to you? I'm going Derrick Rose uh, because when he was healthy pre-COVID, he showed you all he can do by being a closer for this club. And now more recently, he's starting to get his rhythm back and starting to get his timing back and his conditioning back. After that bout with COVID-19, you saw it in the game against the Pelicans. He was phenomenal down the stretch, so he's one. And then I go Reggie Bullock and Alec Burks. Burks off the bench, Bullock in the starting lineup. He's both just been really solid. Bullock both defensively and knocking down three-point shots. Burks as a scorer, particularly late in games. And they've earned the trust of this coaching staff over the course of the season. And that's what you'd expect because veterans play well. Coaches are going to trust them. But to me, that's significant moving forward here because both players are free agents in the offseason. And I think the idea that they've earned the trust of this coaching staff is significant because it could play a role in how the Knicks feel about bringing both players back. And then, Chris, got to go Taj Gibson, Nerlens Noel. Mitchell Robinson going down with significant injuries, two of them, over the course of the season. Nerlens Noel steps in as a starter. Taj Gibson steps in as the backup. They're both phenomenal. The Knicks' defense wouldn't be where it is today without the play of Noel and Taj Gibson. This week on The Putback, we're thrilled to be joined by Knicks center Nerlens Noel. Since taking over as the starter on February 13th, Noel leads the team in blocks and offensive rebounds and is second in steals. Now in his seventh season, Noel's blocking abilities has made him one of the league's top defenders this season. It's crazy. I was just talking about that today, about filling up the stadium um, during treatment with a couple guys. Theo and uh, yeah. Quick, we were talking about that and how contagious it becomes of just the fueling energy through the city of New York. So. You know, I really, I really just can't wait for that. Hopefully, through closer to the playoffs, you know, I think they up the um, capacity a little bit. That'd be great um, if it's safe. Um, but man, I'm ready. I'm ready to fill that thing up and you know get it rocking, like I know it can be. The Knicks have the second best opponent field goal percentage at the rim since you've been starting, and you are second in defensive plus minus for all players this season. So, is there anything different about your approach? or your timing when you're defending the rim or defending in the paint, the pick and rolls this season compared to years past? Just definitely think I was, I've was i been a little more aggressive, you know, to, to playing, you know, more at the rim. And, but I've done it really all my career. Just this team is really shaped, you know, to have an aggressive defensive approach and guys, you know, playing, um, communicating, running around, switching, so. Definitely um, just what, how the team is set up is helping me out. I think the Knicks have the third best defensive rating in the games you started. And the Knicks also, I think, have the third best opponent field goal percentage in the games that you started. Now, I know like the training camp was shorter than usual. And because of COVID, you guys haven't practiced as much as you would in a normal season. How did this defense come together so quickly? You know, I think it was just purely effort. You know, defense is an effort thing. You know, if you want to do it, you can, you can get it done. And I think Coach Thibodeau, with the mindset he was bringing from the jump, that that would be our focus through chain and camp. And, you know, offense would pick up throughout the season. You know, our calling card has been defense, something we can rely on, something that's helps them to keep us in the games competitive. And, you know, I think it's done a great job for us to, you know, have that strong foundation. You know, everybody has each other's back. You know, the resilience factor is major in this locker room. And obviously it's instilled at a great force through Coach Tibbs. I mean, he's an East Coast dude and, you know, he knows what New York is about. You know, he definitely puts 110% into us, you know, making sure, you know, we're keeping things tight, you know, keeping things proper, you know, making the right plays, making the right reads, playing the right way, period. So, you know, if you give into this game and you respect it, you'll get everything, you'll get everything back. And 
you know, Co Coach Tibbs is a big believer in that and so am I. And one of the guys that helps the team become, you know, really unified and together is Kenny Payne, who you have ties to and a lot of other players on the Knicks do as well, going back to your days at Kentucky. What was your relationship like with him at Kentucky and how has he helped you at this particular level? You know, when we first got to Kentucky, it was a little, I mean, it was always a great relationship, but he definitely pushed me to new barriers and boundaries that, you know, I needed to get to at, at 18, 19 years old. And loving relationship of just a, you know, kind of like a father son, you know, he's always just had my back, giving me that good advice that I've needed, you know, whether, you know, probably can't repeat it on here, but, you know, he definitely don't always give me that extra, you know, little budge I need to, you know, take care of my business the right way. And, you know, now having him here full circle and, you know, obviously we see it with Julius as well, what he's been able to do. Um, and obviously that's a lot of credit to Julius himself, but, you know, Kenny Payne just definitely brings that, that extra mentality and edge, you know, to really make a player what he wants to be. With Kenny, is he the same Kenny Payne with the Knicks as he was with Kentucky? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a great one. Um, you know, that's definitely a unique transition, but because college is so different, you know, we just know what to recruit and everything. But Kenny Payne is who he is. And, you know, that's what set him apart from anybody. He could succeed really at any level just off being himself, you know, bringing his aggressive mentality of getting someone better. And I'm sure he's always had it all his life through Louisville days. And, um, the NBA, and that's why, you know, he's always stayed so consistent with, you know, being a guy that's known so well to help guys develop, you know, not just their game, but mentally as, you know, a man off the court. I mean, uh, I'm glad you asked that, actually. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, New York is the mecca of basketball, and this is my first time playing here in the pros, and I love playing here. Uh, I think outside of New Orleans, obviously, uh, I think this might be my favorite place to play outside of New Orleans. I can't even lie to you. I can't lie to you. You just heard Zion right there. He seemed very, very giddy, you know, about playing in Madison Square Garden. And Knicks fans obviously dreamed about getting him recently in the draft. I think Knicks fans, if you want to hold your breath for another five years and, and wait and hope that Zion Williamson comes to New York, go ahead. My advice for the Knicks fan that's been paying attention for the last two decades has lived through this team being bad on the court mostly. Uh, going through some embarrassing things off the court. I think just live in the moment. Enjoy what you're seeing right now. Enjoy the way this group, Tom Thibodeau, Julius Randle, and everybody else is playing, competing for a playoff spot. A million things can happen between now and then. I, I just wouldn't wouldn't cross my fingers and hold my breath if I'm a Knicks fan. You and the Knicks had an incredible defensive performance in Dallas last week, but one highlight really stood out. Can you take us through that monster block you had on Dorian Finney-Smith? You know, just a late game and, you know, fourth quarter, obviously, you know, all my life was, you know, for anybody, any competitive play, you know, you just have a different type of, different type of endorphins that release. And I saw Dorian come down the lane off the rotation swing from Luca, and, you know, he's obviously going to draw a lot of attention. So I was ready for any penetration to the basket. You know, the key thing is always be the second to jump because you never know what they're going to do until they're actually doing it. So, you know, I waited for him to go up with the one hand clean and, you know, I just went and got it. You know what I mean? That's what I've been doing all my life, um, especially in those situations. You know, I was taking pride in securing games defensively. You know, just to have that moment, you know, there and all that, you know, it felt great. You know, it definitely helped my team get that five in a row. When you go up and you go challenge those shots, those the dunk attempts aggressively, like you do all the time, it, it basically, can you just not even think about the idea of ending up on the wrong end of it? Because you know, with social media, you know, if that were to happen, those things go viral. Your block obviously goes viral, but if he dunks it, it's going to go viral too. Do you not even think about that possibility? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to act like I don't. Like, I'm, de I'm definitely aware of who and where and the timing and who can do what, uh, you know, and how well they can do it. My ratio is pretty good, though. I don't really, you know, most of the time I'm just going for it. If I know, you know, what's really going on. But my mindset is to protect the rim at any means necessary. I'm sure fans have their own opinions, but do you, could you rank one over the other between Brandon and Dorian Finney-Smith, or is that not something you get into? Probably for the moment, being in the fourth quarter, you know what I mean? But I feel like I had a few better blocks than that, but, um, but this season, I definitely say those are probably 
in the top five this season, especially most memorable top three, easy. Will you ever remind a guy, like when you get him at the rim, will you remind him the next time you see him or like casually on the court or you let it go? Oh, no, nah, I'll be joking with him all the time. <laughs> after that, um, during Finney Smith, after the, after the last one, I told him to start working on the floaters. <laughs> he ain't going to get all the way there. <laughs> but that's my good friend, though, so, you know, we good for that. Nerlens, thanks so much for joining us and good luck the rest of the way. For Nerlens and Chris, I'm Ian. We'll see you next week on The Footback. Which Knicks veteran impressed you the most during the team's seven-game winning streak? Go to sny.tv slash vote now for this week's fan choice presented by 888-SPORT. Bet $20 on the Knicks or Nets and get 88 bucks in free bets using promo code SNY88.